Okay, so here I'm on my studio computer and let's see what interfaces I've got available at the moment. So I go to Logic Pro X, Preferences, Audio. And right here you can see I've got the Motu 828, the PreSonus FP10 or FirePod. Both of these interfaces give me eight ins and eight outs, which is a total of 16. However, they're not combined. So, so currently I'm just using the Motu and that's a maximum of eight ins and outs. So now let's combine these together to give us a full 16 in, 16 out virtual interface by aggregating them together. We go to the finder, we click go and then utilities and then we choose audio MIDI setup. And right here you can see I've got the PreSonus and the Motu 828. Once again we click the plus at the bottom and create aggregate device. The first thing I need to do is select the new aggregate device that I've created and within that I select the PreSonus FP10 first of all because I want that to be my master. I'm going to leave the sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz um, and the clock source in terms of synchronizing the two devices, the, um, the PreSonus will be the master. Now the PreSonus has actually got eight analog ins and outs plus two digital ins and outs. So it's actually got a total of 10 IO. That's why you can see inputs and output channels from one to 10. The same applies to the Motu device. Now I'm gonna select the Motu and now, as you can see in the chain, you've got the PreSonus first in the order and then the Motu. And just like the PreSonus, the Motu has got 10 ins and outs. That's eight analog and two digital. So in total, we've now got 20 ins and outs. Okay, I'm now gonna rename the actual aggregate device and you can call this whatever, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going back to Logic and as you can see Logic has already detected this so I'm going to select it this time round and now let's see what happens. As you can see the 16 channel IO has been selected. We're just going to come out from here and go back to setting up some audio channels in Logic. So now I'm going to create a set of new audio tracks, let's say 16 and the first one is input one. Okay, so here are my new 16 audio channel strips. And now I'm going to assign the correct input to each channel. So that's one, uh, two, three, three, four, and so on. I'll do the rest in a second. Now back in the main arrange window, I'm actually going to arm all of these audio tracks in readiness for a full 16 track or 16 channel recording. And now we're ready to record. And as you can see, I'm capturing 16 channels of audio. Of course, I haven't got 16 sound sources playing at the moment, but I'm just demonstrating that by combining these two interfaces, I can record up to 16 channels of audio all in one go, and which is really, really flexible. Now, I do hope this has helped you in terms of combining audio interfaces and extending your recording capabilities by giving you additional ins and outs. It will be great to get some feedback on the video. Um, so do remember to leave a comment, like, subscribe and share, and stay tuned for more. Um, if you've got any suggestions, remember to drop me a line and check out some of my other Logic Pro X videos as well as my beat making ones as well. This is Dr. Deuce from musictechtraining.com. Peace.